All right, how's it going, everybody? I'm late, but nobody's here, so whatever. Um, let's play Welcome to the Dungeon. Uh, My fault. Nah, it's cool. Even when you were here, Josh and I were still chatting. True, but it's still mostly my fault. Nope. Oh, it's your computer. It's it. Hewlett Packard's fault. Slander. <laughs> Demonetized. Demonetization. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I, I guess I'm not really going to go through much since there's not really much here. Just kind of the basic stuff. Um, you win when you get two success cards or you're the last person standing. We have the monster deck here. Um, essentially, you're going to, on your turn, either draw a monster card or pass. If you draw a monster card, you'll either add it to the dungeon face down, place it in front of you and grab uh, an adventurer item, or uh, that was it. And then uh, if you pass, you're out for the round. And then basically the last person, if all, all but one player have passed, then that person will adventure in. So it says to be the warrior first. Um... It does say... Well, I guess there's a designer's variant, which I, I think... I know, I know. Last person to enter a dungeon gets to go first. <laughs> no, it's random, actually. So go ahead and roll your, your die. We'll just do random. Five. I got a four. Four, okay. Five first. So uh, the, the designer suggests the following variant, and I feel like if the designer suggests it, it's like the rules. Yeah, why... That's kind of odd. Um, during the first turn of the bidding phase, you must add the card you draw to the dungeon. I assume that's just so, like, the second person isn't, like... I mean, I guess you can't... I don't know why, I guess. Um, pass. No, but you could take a an item. Mm. But... We don't have to do okay, so it. So what do I do to kick things off? Draw a card. Draw a card or pass. Well, I'm not gonna pass. Yeah, it's like ink okay, and gold. So I can decide to put this sucker into the dungeon. Dungeon. Yeah, or you can discard it. Um, there's like two rules in this game, and I can't remember. Them. Oh, yeah, that's right. Or I can discard this card. Face down. An item. Yeah, you can place it in front of you, face down, and remove an item. So all of these monster cards have a health in the or have an attack in the upper left and their item that they are hurt by in the upper right. Okay. Does and it our, add it to the dungeon? Does it get added face up or face down? It should be face down. Okay, I'm gonna add it to the dungeon then. Okay. Oh. Okay. Kirsten? Who knows what I added? No, I I don't. Um Is it a one? The um all of the cards are listed on your player aid. And what they're defeated by. And then, yeah, all of the... Wait, so Kirsten added something to the dungeon, huh? I did. It's because we're all playing the designer variant. Yeah. No, Seth. If you need to draw a card and you can't... You pass. The four Paul sword. Four Paul sword. I didn't see what you did. You gotta tell me. I. I placed him in the dungeon. That's why I don't have a card in front of me. Okay. Then draw a card. Interesting. I do not want that to go in. Remove. Okay. How nice is scripting? Yeah, speaking of scripting, 
Um, I know you've been interested in playing Root. They just came out with the app, I think. And Andrew picked it up and said it was very, very good. Okay, yeah. You know, I saw they actually have, like, a, a PC app, too. That's what he's been playing. The one on Steam, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you wanted to, you could even play against him. He keeps trying to get me to play it. I'm like, I don't need it yet. I do not have it. I think it was, like, $25 or something. Yeah, I, I'm going to wait for a sale. Back here, up. Sorry. Now we're starting to take stuff out, huh? I don't like... Having never played this game before... I don't like... Not... Being able to just be like, I'm in. I mean, I guess you pass. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I could've... I see now. Yeah, Andrew's in the chat saying to play Root with him, because I won't. <laughs> I gotta see what the price is. But I might I might be in. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and pass. Okay. Count me out. Uh, I was gonna pass. I see that as soon as I was like, you don't really have like a way to be like, I'm in. I'm like, oh, I guess you force other people. It's not about being like, I think I can take it. Because you can always take it. Yeah. It's about knowing when you can't. Because you can kind of get, like me, I shouldn't have discarded my last card. Because I just kind of screwed myself over here. So what do you do? You enter the dungeon now? Yeah. So. Seth becomes the first one to enter the dungeon. I have six HP. Um, oh, I, I guess there's only three cards in here. If you enter... You click enter the dungeon? I did not. Put that I down. I feel like that's what you should do. Yes. The warrior enters the dungeon. Sweet. Next round. Okay, so a five. The I'm warrior's fighting a golem. Oh my god, it's like doing everything for me. Yeah, yeah you're gonna die. So I have one health left. Uh -huh. Yeah, because. Torch! Boom, you're welcome. Do I need. I don't even need to do win. anything. You're gonna win. Yeah! <laughs> because you have oh my... the dragon spear. <laughs> you did it, Seth. You're the best. Let me turn you guys up. Andrew said you're kind of quiet. Alright, I turned... I hopefully turned them up. Let me know, Andrew. Thanks for... Thanks for telling me. Alright. Well, that was easy. So now, essentially... as a YouTuber, you're supposed to say, Shut up, chat. The levels are just fine. I think as a YouTuber, <laughs> I'm supposed to say... Let me tell you about NordVPN. <laughs> Our next hero is going to be NordVPN. <laughs> um, cool, I think. Okay, so then we shuffle the monsters. The player who just went into the dungeon chooses the next adventurer for the players to use. Let's keep it in the base. We don't have to. Um, I think I'm going to go rogue. Go rogue. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then the start player is the one who just went into the dungeon to draw a card. I feel like... Well, I guess if you do that... Oh, wait. What do you do? You don't even have a torch. The game done changed. Yeah, it's interesting. I like the... I like the change there. Okay. Add it to the dungeon. Okay. Let's see. Um, hmm. I'm gonna add it to the dungeon. Playing by those designer variant. to the dungeon. Let's see what we can do here.
I'm tapping. Okay. Already? Yep. Yep. Didn't like just me and you. Didn't like me taking out the uh So does this defeat all monsters with six or more? Oh, it does, yeah. Huh. I mean, I gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now with Curse Now, it's a weird thing where it's like, if I remove something, I have to make sure I can still take it. Because if you remove something I don't like you're removing, then I'm just gonna pass. Hmm. I'll add it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the thief has, or the rogue has so much health. Let's see what if I win. I knew okay. you were going to pass anyways. There's no way I'm doing this. Oh. And you got, oh, you're safe the first time. Healing potion, but there were, I knew there were two uh. of I knew there were Yeah. With the there. All right. Um, let's go with. Yes, yeah, it's, it's. It's actually like, I mean, as different. I think as different as you can get without. With what it is, without those like. Special items. Well, I guess at least this has the grail. Alright. You put one in? I did. It's weird, it feels like there's way more cards in the deck than there actually is. Yeah. You mean the monster deck? Yeah, I mean, or the dungeon deck or, or what have you. Um, I just feel like... 
there's uh Beth, you're up. I think I'm gonna pass. I'm up one and I'm Talk down one. I'll add it to the dungeon. I'm passing. So am I entering this dungeon then? Yeah. You are. Let's do it. Shuffle them up. Next round. One. Uh, don't use Polymorph. What's Polymorph? Place one monster you draw with the next monster from the deck. Once per dungeon. Don't use Polymorph. I'll take the hit. Next round. Six. Mage is fighting Lich. So when does uh, the Omnipotence go into effect? Uh... Take six. Maybe it knows. It just polymorphed to a five. Okay, I get five damage. This is not going well. Oh, okay, so doesn't matter. Omnipotence doesn't work here. Take one damage from the goal. Take four. Ah, darn it. Do I have nothing that I can. Yeah, I just had no equipment left. All right, Josh, you can pick an adventure. You can pick over here, too, if you want to do the uh, expansion ones. We can bring them all in, yeah, I let's figure, throw after one in we... there here. Um, let's go with the bard. Okay, and then I'll start. Add to the dungeon. Hmm. I think the adventurers are are fairly interesting. Yeah, I do too. Up here up. I'm not up, right, Kirsten? You're up here. Oh. What did you remove? The elvish harp that makes things deal one or two damage when you're less than five. Damn it. Everyone's favorite harp. Yeah, I removed something. Lucky coin. I'm passing. Me too. Oh, darn it. Okay, I might be out here. Whatever, let's do it. The bard enters the dungeon. Two. Would have loved to have the even things. <laughs> Next round. Four. So I have literally nothing that can fight any of these things, do I? Okay. I'm just dead here, I guess. Yep. Oh, no. Dancing Blade. Defeat one odd strength monster. Do I lose the dancing blade then? I assume, but I wouldn't touch it. I, I assume. assume. Yeah. One. Oh There's your gosh. flute. Are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? What is this? HP up. HP up. Defeat goblins. How many are left? One. Reduce all damage for each defeated this way. Reduce all damage by one. Yeah. Has this been counting that? It's. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like it's it's closer to ink and gold than uh, like the push your luck and can't stop. I'm not gonna pick princess because I think it's sexist. That's fair. 
Is the princess? Or maybe like. she derives more HP from Mr. Charm, who takes the hits, takes five hits to the face. <laughs> um, what did we do last time, Bard? Let's do Necromancer. That one looked pretty sweet. And I'll draw one. Yeah, I like this. I think it's a nice little game. Okay. Add to the dungeon. Add it to the dungeon. Add it to the dungeon! Add to the dungeon. Keep cranking. Add to the dungeon. Uh oh. I haven't even looked at what these things are. Did you really add it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's one thing I don't care for. I mean, I guess as long as we say, but there's like no indication of what anybody does. Yeah. But we could be using the like turn. We could always be using the turn thing, but then uh, we would just forget that. Let's see what do I want to do here. Is Liz like sharpening steel? That's not me. Is Kirsten like sharpening steel? How peculiar you're. It ended when I brought it up. I will pass. I know I might regret this, but I'll pass. Hey, if you lose, you like when we go in, we can either win or lose. And I think Kirsten's just gonna keep passing. I'm afraid I won't get the opportunity for it to come back around, but I, I now will. I mean, I no one's have. removed anything. There's yeah. a ton of stuff, but you have a lot of items. I think Kirsten wants a. Yeah, okay, I should have stayed in. See what you two do. <sighs> Add it. God. Hmm. Passing. Damn it. Yeah, that was rough. This is for the win or the loss. Yep, you defeat him. What's the possession scroll? Defeat one monster, add their total strength. For a measly three? No. Well, but you already have the dark stone that defeats all monsters with one and three. True. I think there's higher. I think I put higher things in there. Oh my god. I mean, there we go. Yeah, you gotta use possession school on that. Then what? You take seven. Should have done it with that one. Ah, oh, should have done it with that one. Yeah, you get to respawn though. Just with one, I'm not gonna be able to get through three here. No, there's you. That you beat that. Beat that. Oh my gosh. Can you do it? I'm gonna be so surprised. Darn it. No. 
It's uh... over. I don't think I would have survived <laughs> to the dragon. But... Yeah. All right. Um, I guess I'll still pick. Oh. So do you still... I am Robert. out. Okay. This is player elimination in its finest. Let's do... We're going to have you guys do the barbarian. And so I'll draw first, because I was after you, right? Yeah. I actually really like this. Got it. Add it. I'll pass, Kirsten. You can have it. I think you're muted, Kirsten, because I think I heard you in the house, but not... Oh, you're right. I was. Yes. All right. I'm doing this. Oh, use the fire axe. Oh. Oh. I think this seems doable. I think she's got this. Yeah, because no matter what, you can kill yeah. them. Yeah. Exactly. Or you can use the fire axe. Sure, let's use the fire axe. Why not? All right. Okay. Person. This is the round. Technically, Kirsten can lose on this one, and then the next one is the... Mm. Alright, let's do the ninja.
Yeah, I know the Welcome Back to the Dungeon has, like, special monsters. I wonder how that shakes it up. Smoke bomb's dangerous. I'll add it. Okay. Good. Yeah, I wanted to uh, be the master of my own destiny here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... That's all but one of your house. Ouch. Yeah, that's a rough first draw. I will not use smoke bomb. Oh man, yeah, I just lose because I know what's in there. Yeah, I defeat monsters with one, three, and five, so I have to use it. Yeah. But... Discard the smoke bomb. <laughs> or no, I guess you could discard everything else. What happens if you discard HP? I'll, I'll die because it'll reduce yeah. your HP. Um, let's see. How many vampires are there? Did you put any vampires in? Uh, vampires don't help me anyways. Two more. You have to use, use smoke it. Bomb. I have to use this. And I don't think I can win no matter what. I think you can discard your smoke. Oh, a, diff a different one. So if you use it, yeah. will you die? Yeah. Because it'll reduce it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, good job, Kirsten, for not taking risks. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually think the only thing I don't love about the game is I never really like games where you can just like win by being the last player standing. By not I doing you know, anything? I think, yeah, I think like if well, you lose, then other... Well, that's not true. Because I did... Well, I didn't take the risk... But, I mean, I played strategically. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and, you did. And again, not, and no, no, and not in just in the way of, like, I chose when to back out, but, like, which cards I put in and when I decided to do stuff. Like, I made choices with the intention of pushing you guys to that edge. Like, that was my intention. Right. No, I don't think you, like, played wrong or... or poorly or anything like that. I just feel like with something like this, I would rather... Like, I guess... And and my, my opinion is slightly skewed just because I didn't think the player elimination would be a problem. But it kind of was a little boring to go through, like, two or three more rounds where I was just kind of here. Um... But I think it is kind of like, I don't know. I guess you only win in one dungeon. Yeah. And, and I, I guess, won that dungeon. Right. And I guess at most you can only go in three. But it just felt a little, I was like, I don't know. Especially since you didn't do any... I'm not calling you out. This is more of a game problem, not a you problem. 
Yeah, that's what I was saying. I think it's like more of a, a game problem of like, I feel like it's just never as a feel good, like when it's a last man standing game rather than like a points game. Well, like what you could do is when you lose, like when you lose as a player, all the other players are awarded a point too, and then we play to a certain point value. Yeah, it's just something that like when it was all, I I actually really enjoyed this. Um, I liked the different adventurers. I thought they played differently enough. It'd be interesting to try like the special monster cards or whatever. Um, but it was just like a nice, simple game, I guess. Um, and I thought there were some, like I said, from my point of view, there were some really interesting decisions to be made about, like, not again, not just when to pass or whatever, but again, like, is this a card I discard and remove a an item, or mm-hmm. is this a card that I, like I said, I kind of went it went on my first, not after the first round, but I think after like this, after, I think Seth, after your second uh, dungeon enter, uh, is when I said. No, I think I'm going to play with the intention of killing you guys off. And I guess I don't love that about this game. But again, like, it's not so much that, like, and, and, and yes, it's a last man standing th- kind of thing. But again, like, it was also a, like, I legitimately was trying to kill you guys off. Right. And I just feel like, I guess I maybe feel like I got punished a bit for playing the game. Because to me, the interesting part is like, I mean, there's that press your luck of going through the dungeon. And I like going through the dungeon. But it, I mean, it's totally a viable strategy to just try and burn the dungeon down for the other people. And I don't know if I love that aspect and strategy of the game because it feels, I mean, it's a its a game and a me thing where it's fun to see people go through the dungeon. It's not fun to see like somebody win because other people went through the dungeon. If that makes sense. No, I, I, I don't disagree. And I, I mean, and I get the point like you know, that um, but, like, what I was trying to say is that, I mean, I think it has some interesting choices in, like, again, Definitely. when to pass, when to press your lust, but again, but like, what you do with that card. Do you decide to do this? And, like, that, and I took, took the viable, the, like you said, the viable strategy to say, I'm going to burn this dungeon, burn you guys down in this dungeon, and I'm going to find, and, like, in, like, the one time I went in, um, you know, I, I knew I was pushing a little hard, but I was, I also felt, like, that was a dungeon I could maybe handle um, if I had to go in, and I did. Um, but I, I just thought, I mean, I thought, like I said, for a, a short little game, I thought it had some interesting strategy, um, some interesting decisions to be made. Um, and there was, like, so, like I, I liked the different um, adventures. Mm-hmm. Like, I liked that they didn't all have the same stuff. It, like, you definitely had to, like, think about how you are attacking or how like this adventure is going to um work in the dungeon that you're creating and and like what item to remove and right like i think i i agree with you i think there's interesting choices to be made and i mean i think it's it's fun and you know for i bet you could get this down to an easy you know 15, 20 minutes. Um, Absolutely. And just like something small, like if you're waiting for people to show up somewhere, you know, just an easy thing to play. Um, I think it's totally like fun enough for what it is. Absolutely. I do yeah, think. I think my only thing is I, I would just give, I would, I think, rebalance the. Um, Re- rebalance the like perks of going into the dungeon and winning. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like you should have to go into the dungeon to win, but I don't know how you would do that after everybody died. I guess I'd rather like. I mean, I guess it's so it doesn't go on forever, maybe. But I wonder I would how. Never eliminate 
people, like, so I was thinking, I'd never eliminate people, and I would play to five points. You get two points for successfully getting through the dungeon, you get a point if someone dies in the dungeon that wasn't you. Well, what do you think... I guess that... And everybody stays in the game the entire time, and I think you skew the... You want people to go into the gun dungeon, you want people... It's more exciting when there's a bigger stack of cards, um, you know, so you want people to go in looking for points. I actually think it, it's missing... It's a fun game, definitely, and I like the weight of it, I like the length of it and everything. I think it is missing, like, something that, like, Escape from... Or what is that game? Ink and Gold has, where, you know, it's a uh, high risk, high reward kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think I would just tweak the yeah. reward a little bit and remove the player elimination. Because I think in this game, player this game is not particularly well served by player elimination. I agree. And actually, so you mentioned two points for clearing the dungeon, one point to everybody else for losing. Mm -hmm. And my initial thought was I wonder how much or where the game design goes if you just take out the losing and you just play first to two wins. But I guess you do need that risk of I don't want to lose a dungeon. I, I really like Josh's I do too. adjustment because, again, it doesn't take out the strategy of, of like, again, burning down the dungeon. It is still a viable strategy, but it's less likely to work there. Well, and you need to, you need to have, you need to penalize people for, for losing a dungeon. Right. Not just rewarding people for winning a dungeon. And it, it's something where I feel like, I mean, I feel like you gotta, like, earn your win by clearing a dungeon like I said I, I like the that change like that because again you would have to watch five people um, you know, fail at w uh, winning a dungeon uh, you know for Josh's strategy to work so what do you what would these points have been we would have had so Seth lost first, so it would be one to one, Kristen and I, and then Seth won, so it'd be three to one to one, and then I lost. Well, if you give the if you give a successful clear of a dungeon two points, so it'd be three to two to two. No, sorry, it'd be three to one to one, yeah. and then I lost, so it would be four to one to one. No. I just won't talk anymore. Yeah, I, you're counting the things up kind of strangely. I'm not doing uh, it correctly. I'm just ruining things. Hold on. And then I then I won one, right? Well, here, let me drop some counters here. Okay, so Seth, um, okay, two points for win. I uh, won the first points one. To everybody else. So Seth loses. So Kirsten and I both go point. Um, Seth wins, so Seth gets two points. I lose, so you guys both get a point. What happens next? I lose. Kirsten, win Kirsten wins a game. Okay. Did, Seth, did I win one before you died, or did you die first? I thought I died first. I thought yeah, so, too. So then, then we go I up. won one. Then I won one. I, yeah. And then I won one. Yeah, so it would have and ended with... You winning in the dungeon five to four to three. The difference here is that if we're playing to five, then Seth stays in it till the end. Yeah, because I would have you know, still a... gotten points. No, I wouldn't have, because you guys won. Until yeah. Josh lost. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and playing to five doesn't like needlessly extend the length of the game. I still think you. I think that was like the same amount of rounds or what you know, like twenty minutes. It would have yeah. been one less because Josh, if Josh was one last round after I would have won. Yeah, I, I like but, that. I think it just nudges the incentive um, to it incentivizes you to press your luck a little bit more because that's actually what I felt like 
near the end of the game, I kept thinking, you know, I really feel like the game wants you to, you know, just dive into the dungeon, but it doesn't, the incentives are not really lined up like that. The incentives are basically you end up getting caught mm-hmm. ha- having to go into the dungeon most of the time. Well, and that way. I, I agree with that, and I think... No, I don't. What? <laughs> I have no idea what I was going to say. Oh, no, I was going to say, like, there are some games... I know, I know player elimination is, frankly, a dated game design. And I think there are some games that work with it, um... Of course I can't think of any, but I know I have, I'm sure we have one, um, that I enjoy. Does Love Letter? No. Does Love Letter eliminate? It doesn't. Mm Mm-mm. I could have sworn I had a, I don't know what off the top of my head is player elimination, but I know I've played player elimination, but I don't necessarily think that this game benefits from it and maybe maybe that time you gain not playing it on tabletop simulator is less awkward but when I was done and you guys didn't it wasn't like immediately resolved on the next one it I felt it I was just like oh man I'm just gonna be like sitting here forever it's still two or three rounds of especially like, since around. the only the only interesting thing for somebody that was eliminated is the dungeon. I don't really care if you guys are discarding or removing or anything like that. I just want to see you guys go through the dungeon. And that's the shorter half of the round. And I think it's always more interesting to like give a player a long shot ability to get back into it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if I, you know, playing it again, I would definitely rather play with, like, a point variant, like like you suggested, Josh. Um, but and Bigger dungeons are more fun. Um, definitely. Yeah. I think the, um, the back to the dungeon ones, I, you know, having the equipment that um, you get some choice in is really good. Yeah, I, I like that too. Like, do you want to use the smoke bomb? Do you want to use the whatever one you had? Um, or the, yeah, the necrom- the possession. Like, I like that decision. The, the warrior was a little weird in that it was just, it kind of, there's like with ink and gold, there's player choice during This feels like a program running its course, at least for the warrior. I mean, I guess the yeah, warrior, there's no choice with the warrior, is there? Um, I guess maybe I the Vorpal Sword. The Vorpal Sword works. Do you, you don't look through the monster deck, though, beforehand, right? Um, what does it say? Choose a type of monster before revealing the first dungeon card. You defeat okay. all monsters matching that choice. Okay. If you choose to defeat skeletons, and there happen to be two of them in the dungeon, defeat both skeletons. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I mean, I I think the giving players, like, the choices of Mm -hmm. what to do makes it really interesting on the... Like, the ninja has a really interesting one. I mean, that was probably the most interesting, exciting one, having to make choices there. So I I did like that a lot. Well, and, like, when I was running through as the the necromancer, I mean, trying trying to think, like, what was the highest thing I put in there? Like, what do I think? You know, is there another high thing? And like I said, like, if I didn't... I don't think I could have won either way. But I possessed the six, and then there was the seven. And I was like, but I don't think I would have lived if I didn't possess the six. But... Yeah, I mean, I think it does... I think it does good things, and I think... Like... I think it's totally playable as written, but I I think I would like it better with by taking out the player elimination and throwing in a just that simple point system that you came up with, Josh. And I'm sure there's a good reason. 
like once you start playing it, why that doesn't work, and somebody who put a hundred hours yeah. of development time into this can tell me why that oh the state you know there's that maybe when they were playing it they just thought oh it's not it's without player elimination in this kind of a short game like there's no reason for players to just like not ruin the game by always going in and just being like oh whatever like they'll always take it and just hope they don't lose five times well i guess you just hope you don't lose five times straight before you can win three times yeah yeah there's probably so some probability it's... thing there yeah but gotta trust the hundred of hours that the developer had? I don't know. We played it once. <laughs> <laughs> if I know anything about all the games I've designed, all you need to do is play it once. Half the time, you can't even play it once. <laughs> Although I say that, you know, they have 100 hours, and, you know, don't at me, whoever developed this game. Um, not that I have a Twitter account that you can at, at but maybe I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> Um, but yeah I mean what I know is some games that we've played on this show have not been 100 hours of development time yeah <laughs> yes. well and this was uh, um, I guess they came out with a a new one or they re-implemented it in 2017 mm -hmm. um I wonder what they learned in four years. But I mean, it's it's Oink um, is the publisher, and I've heard really good things of some of their stuff. I mean, they've you know they do a lot of small games, and I've heard some really really good things. Um, but I guess yeah, I mean, I guess the reimplementation seems to be the same same thing. There's still player elimination in the. It might just be more more stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the thirteen monsters look like they're different art, and they have symbols more match the. Uh... Yeah, and they have like the special ones um, that do. Like, what do we got here? The fairy has a strength of zero and is considered to be an even strength monster. The ally has no strength, but he allows you to ignore the next monster in the dungeon. The mimic has a strength equal to the number of dungeon of equipment tiles you still have when you face it in the dungeon. So I like the these are maybe a little more complex monsters, but it's not a really complex game, so I think that's a uh, that's fine. And you don't play with all of the special monsters. I think you shuffle them and add two into the monster deck. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. Which is nice, because you don't know what's in there, and if you get a special monster, then it's like, eh, maybe I'll try and get away with... So the fairy can't damage you. Right, yeah, I think she's just kind of a weak... Like, just a... It's kind of like a false card. So you can put the fairy in, and people are like, oh man, there's like... I think five cards oh, okay. is too rich for my blood. And you're like, I know that one card doesn't do anything. Yeah, that's pretty good. But yeah, I mean, Cool Stuff has it for 12 bucks, which I don't think is terrible little for a little game like this. No, not at all. I actually was looking to get San Juan after we played Roll, and I thought, like, oh, man, Race maybe has too much iconography, but San Juan is great, but... I think it's out of, it must be out of print. I know there is a second edition. Um, yeah, maybe it is. I think it's weird. I mean, maybe it's just in between printings. I feel like San Juan is... I mean, I guess I haven't even heard of Puerto Rico in a long time, but I just feel like San Juan and Puerto Rico are kind of evergreen things that are just constantly in print. Yeah, it's like not being able to find Carcassonne. Yeah. I wonder if... But yeah, it is. I see it's out of stock at Game Nerds, and I think it was out of stock at Cool Stock. It's cool stuff, too. 
Every time I like tell someone about Cool Stuff Inc. and you know their motto is like Cool Stuff in stock, they're always like, Yeah, they didn't have it. <laughs> that's because they're like, That's because I think I think for so long Cool Stuff was was the place, and I think now Amazon has gotten a little better with it. And then there's Game Nerds now, and you know Miniature Market I think was always there, and and some other ones. But I feel like Cool Stuff was always the thing, and then they partnered up with the Dice Tower, which was kind of the bigger um, channel, and. And now that I think cool stuff is just where people check first. Yeah. And, so, and, and especially now that gaming is bigger and there's more, you know, everybody always laughs at whenever Shut Up and Sit Down comes out with a new video. Everyone's like, darn it, I was just thinking of buying this next week. And now it's now I'm not going to be able to because they posted a video and it'll be sold out. Um. Yeah, don't don't at me, CD, or don't at me, cool stuff. <laughs> Unless you're saying it's in stock. Use promo code. So how about five? <laughs> <laughs> so I was just looking. Somebody was asking if other games would replace San Juan, and they said San Juan is good. Race for the Galaxy is better. Glory to Rome is better than both. Wingspan is not good at all. I mean, race is better, but I just feel like the iconography is such a. I mean, anybody you can pull San Juan out and play it with literally anybody. I think race you got to play it with people with a little bit of experience, and then a little bit of experience with race. Yeah, like I think you race even to. takes an addition. Like I could handle. I think I could handle race now, but I think I would even like. It's still a game that you'd have to play again. Mm-hmm. You'd kind of have to have that throwaway game to just be like, I have no idea, you know. I love the simplicity of San Juan and hate Race for the Galaxy. Yeah, San Juan gets around the iconography problem by just writing the text on the card. And I think probably things are a little bit simpler. I think all the, the, uh, yeah, the actual abilities are a little bit simpler. Yeah. I wonder if it's just in between. I mean, nothing is on Board Game Geek about like in between print runs or anything. Um, at least in in the last few months, so I'm sure it is. Yeah. But anyways, I think I am gonna call this um, and get some much needed sleep. I always forget yep, that good. Ravensburger does puzzles. Yeah, I know. I was looking at that the other day, too, because I was like, oh, we have several Ravensburgers. So. Yeah, I think it's just in between printings. It's not on in stock in their store. I wonder how long it's been out. I wonder if our store would have it. That's what I... I, I realized a long time ago. I guess not a long time ago, because my birthday was just at the beginning of the month, but with quarantine it's like yeah what do you do you know um and we just kind of sat around which was nice but i i keep telling people i back so many kickstarters anymore and i have all the fun of spending the money with none of the fun of getting the thing <laughs> And so I'm like, yeah, buy a kick, you know, pledge money to a Kickstarter. And then I'm just like, I didn't get anything for it. Pledge money to this Kickstarter. It's like Monopoly money at that point. And and what I yeah. miss is like in high school, just going to the game store and like not being so deep into the hobby and just like going in and being like, eh, this looks cool. It was like going to the video store and just looking off of a cover or or the you know the owner would recommend games or what whatnot and just like going to the store buying a game going home and playing it then and like that's that's like the experience i want but even still if we went to the game store like i said i'm so deep into the hobby now that i just i kind of have an impression of stuff which not that that's bad but there's just like I miss I miss just like even just buying a game you know even buying a game on Amazon and it gets here in two days like I just miss going to the store and buying a game and playing it 
I mean, you can like still do that, can't you? Yeah, if I want to get COVID. No, I mean, I guess I see what you're, you're saying. You don't want to just go buy it on Amazon or something. Yeah, like, like Godzilla Tokyo Clash came out, and it's a game that I've like struggled with for forever. It's I love the theme, I love the aesthetic, but there's something about it that just hasn't excited me enough to get it. And Target had it on sale for I think 15 bucks, which is totally appropriate, you know. And it was something that I think and I don't even think it was in the store, so I wouldn't I couldn't even use COVID as an uh, as an excuse. But it was something that I told myself if it was if I was at Target and I just kind of went to the game aisle and I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is 15 bucks. Let's just grab it. But going through the quote unquote hassle of buying it on Amazon or buying it on Target, I guess, and then like waiting for it to ship, probably having to make an account. It just like, I guess, wasn't worth $15 to do. It, w- it would be worth $15 to have it then. Yeah. Not necessarily fifteen dollars to be like, can't wait to have this tomorrow. But it's hell being me. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna close out of this. Get some get some shut eye. So, um, thanks for hanging out. Uh, sorry for being a little late. And if you liked it, tell a friend. If you didn't like it, th- uh, lie to a friend. Check out the links in the description below. That's all our social media and everything. Um, click buttons, interact, smash bell, all that stuff. Any little bit of support is super cool to see. It'll also let you know who's going live with what, when. Which I always say that, but really I just go live. I was talking to Andrew the other day. We're like working on podcast stuff uh, for the future. And he's like, yeah, you always wanted to like... At the beginning of quarantine, you're like, yeah, we should stream, we should stream, we should stream. But, like, I just don't like doing it. And I was like, Andrew, you're the one who always said you wanted to stream. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do this for him. I'm going to put myself out there and be like, yeah, let's do it. And so we we just learned that both of us don't like streaming. <laughs> Not that I don't like it, but there's weeks where I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, I just streamed from, like, Friday to Wednesday. And it's like, give me my evenings back. Yeah. But I say that, um, and honestly, I mean, it's nice to play games with you guys. I play games with Colin on Monday. You know, I, it gives, I've been drawing more. It gives me reason to do things. I can't complain too much. And, you know, I take off when I want to. It's not like I feel I'm, I'm indebted to anybody and I need, you know, I need to do it. But um, it was just funny to learn. But I say that with the fact that I am not going live uh, probably until Monday. So you guys, nobody needs to keep an eye out for that. But still, interact with those links. Uh, in the meantime, everybody have a good rest of your night. And I will see you next time. Bye.